In this video, we're going to explore a different application or connection of trajectories to engineering type problems in a slightly lighthearted uh, scenario. But the idea is going to be that if we track some system or some particle over time, and it's going to be subject to not just movement, so velocity, but also accelerations that cause changes in direction. And then if we freeze frame at one instant and imagine something being let go, dropped off, or thrown from there, what we would see is that Newton's first law will kick in. And Newton's first law says, unless acted on by a force, an object will continue to move in a straight line. So if we can capture the velocity at launch, we can then define a parametric curve for the post-launch straight line trajectory that follows. Let's see how that applies in a particular context here. So Indiana Jones is hanging onto a cart, which is following a twisty track defined by this function here. I'm not sure what that function looks like quite yet, but we do know that there is a target, an arch villain, at coordinates five and minus three. So what we're wondering is, as we're moving along a track, the track is never going to go through that point. However, there might be a point, say, here, where if we draw a tangent line, you can tell already that that's not quite right. I'll back that off a bit here. Where if we draw a tangent line to the curve there, we are going to end up, after that straight line launch, at the target we're aiming for. So it's going to be a two-stage problem, one in defining the path along trajectory, and along the way, determining what our velocities are, and then trying to determine what the trajectory after launch will be, and making sure that intersects with the target point of five, negative three. So how do we set this up? I think the easiest way is to define a particular value for the launch time. Here we're going to call it A. What we need that for is as a starting place for the trajectory afterwards. So we're going to define A as the launch time, and let's call it L of t is going to be the vector value function of the trajectory afterwards. Post-launch trajectory. All right, with that in mind, let's see how these ingredients would get built up. So we know R of t is equal to 2 plus t and t cubed minus t for the y-coordinate. At launch, the position is simply r at time a. So all we do for that is put in a's everywhere that we had a second ago. Let's do those in green just for highlighting effect. 2 plus a, and then a cubed minus a. So all the t's replaced with a's. That defines the location of this red dot on the diagram here. Now what happens after that? Well, what we're going to do is follow the velocity. In fact, after launch, we're going to use one of our basic physics formulas. That position at time t is equal to position naught plus v times t. Now the only difference here from what you might have been more comfortable with is that all of these quantities are going to be vectors. Our position after launch is going to be where we start plus the velocity times time. Fortunately, we have all of these ingredients. The position at time zero, well, this is time zero after launch. That is going to be exactly what we mean by our position on the track at launch time. So we might launch after five seconds, then we kind of reset the clock and go from there afterwards. And the velocity, we don't have it yet, but we can compute it very easily because that's just our prime. Also evaluated at that same instant, it's going to be a component of this ingredient here, parallel to that line. That's our velocity at time A or our prime at A. And with that, we have all the ingredients we need with the note that we want at some point this to go through the point five minus three. So if we set up the target position down here as five minus three, we're only going to satisfy that intersection for some points, some launch points and matching velocities. So what we're gonna do is take all these ingredients and set up that equation. So we've copied over the position and we are going to add the velocity. Let's call it V of A. And either looking at the formula here and differentiating or simply working with this and differentiating with respect to A, the velocity is going to be one and then three A squared minus one. And so the straight line L of t, I'll make a note about t in a second, but L of t is going to equal the initial position, which is 2 plus a, a cubed minus a, plus velocity times time. And our velocity is simply 1, and 3a squared minus 1, and time is t. So this is our initial position as a vector, and this is our velocity as a vector times t. And then we want that to go through the point 5, negative 3, so we simply sub that in. And then we get a set of equations that we can start solving for both a and t. Let's set up the x equations. The x equation says we have to go through 5 to hit the target. And that's going to happen only if we start at 2 plus a for x. And over time, we end up with 1 times t, noting the multiplication out here, 1 times t. For the y coordinates to match, to land on target, we have to have negative 3 equaling a cubed minus a. And with that, we add the velocity, which is a little more complicated, 3a squared minus 1, all times t. And that's the second component here, multiplied by t. And our job now is simply to find any solutions if some exist. So let's go take a look. Let's get these equations numbers. This is equation one, and it lends itself fairly easily to a solution, which is t equals, uh, bring the two over, it'll be three minus a. Let's call that equation three. 
And then if we take 3 and sub it into 2, we'll eliminate one of the variables, and we should be able to solve for a. So t is equal to 3 minus a. Now we take this equation, and it's going to be a bit complicated with all the cubes, but we'll see what comes out here. We have a cubed minus a plus 3a squared times minus 1, all times 3 minus a. And that looks a little hideous at first. Let's see how it plays out. Just expanding. Negative 3 a cubed minus a. Multiplying this out, we're going to have 3, we're going to have 9a squared minus 3, and then the a multipliers minus 3a cubed plus a. And if we tidy that up a little bit, we see a minus a and a plus a that cancel nicely, and everything else is going to be left behind. So let's move everything to the right hand side and see what we get. We'll have 0 equals a cubed minus 3a cubed is minus 2a cubed. Then that's that term. We have 9a squared added to that. And the a's have cancelled, and then the minus, actually the minus 3's on both sides also cancel. And so that's it. 2 minus 2a squared, a cubed rather. Let's write that more clearly. Minus 2a cubed plus 9a squared. Well, we can factor that quite nicely as a squared times minus 2a plus 9. And so this gives us a equals 0, or minus 2a plus 9. That'll be minus 2a plus 9 equals 0, which is the same as, bring that over, a equals 9 halves. All right. So these are the two launch times, two possible launch times. So in some sense, we might be done. In fact, we actually are done in the sense that we found two points where if we launch at that location, the straight line that's tangent to that point on the curve will go through the target 5, negative 3. We set up the math to solve for that, so in some sense we should be good. Let's just investigate a little further, though. We're going to see there's a little bit of a wrinkle with the physics. So when we take the a equals 0 point, then our launch is from the point, well, it's 2, and if a is 0, it's just 0, with velocity equal to, going back a slide here, our velocity is always 1, and then 3a squared minus 1, 3a squared 0 minus 1, and so our l, our trajectory afterwards, I'm actually going to change the name here, defining a new counter. So like we used s for another time value earlier, let's use s here as equal to the time after launch on the line. And that's going to be 2, 0, plus the velocity times time, 1 minus 1 times t, oh, times s. Now, if we do that and say we want to have our target be 5, negative 3, that means 5 is equal to 2 plus s. That gives us s equals 3. And just to check that the y-coordinate also works out, it should because we solve for this a value so that everything did work out, uh, we're going to have 0 minus s. That is also s equals 3. That's good. So Indy uh, lands, on the, lands on the target 3 seconds after launch. Perfect. All right. What about the other case when we had s equals, sorry, a equals, our launch time on the original curve was 9 halves, 9 halves down here. That gave a launch from 2 plus 9 halves, which will be 2 and 4 is 13 halves, and this is a lot more complicated, use your calculator for this if you need to, it ends up being 693 eighths, totally intuitive, at the velocity, which fortunately would be a little bit simpler, the velocity again is just 1 and then 3a squared minus 1, so it would be 1 and then 3 times 9 halves squared minus 1, also fairly large in terms of the uh, rational terms there, but it's building blocks. And then what we have is L of s, as a vector, I should put that as a vector here as well, is equal to our launch point, 13, 2, 693 eighths, initial position, plus the velocity, 1, 239 over 4, s, as our time value, so velocity times time. And again, if we take our target point in here, and we start solving for when the intersection occurs, what we find out pretty quickly is for the x-coordinate, say, we're going to have 5 is equal to 13 halves plus s, and that leads to, well, this is actually 6.5. That's going to lead to s equals negative 1.5, or 3 halves, and that is odd. Let's think about what that means for just a moment. What this means in a graphical sense is that we have our axes happening here, we have our target. In this case, we are floating along, floating along, and at the point of launch, that was our a equals 9 halves, we would have a velocity, but we would have to go backwards in time along that velocity until we encounter our point at 5, negative 3. Strictly from a physics perspective, this solution is not viable. Because we can only move forward after we launch. And this is saying we'll intersect that line in a geometric sense, so that's cool, but it's not the direction that we actually care about, or that Indy can move in in this scenario. So in this case here, we should launch only at time 0, and this 9 halves one is a bit of a distraction. Now that can feel a bit abstract, especially with just sketches. So what we're going to do is animate this in MATLAB just so you can see how this plays out geometrically with some computer-generated graphics that are a little more accurate than these sketches here. So what we're going to do first is animate the curve. So this is actually the trajectory shown by the TT cubed. 
And you can imagine this is Indy moving along this curve here. And there's this little buckle here. You can imagine the launch time is sometime around here. You can see the velocity would take us down to this corner. However, as we go on, we see it's also possible that, especially if we went out to 4.5 for our time, we might see that backwards vector happening if we could visualize our velocity in that way. So what we're going to do is continue this on for a little longer and also add the velocity vector and the tangent line. So here's that animated. You can see the velocity tangent to the vector. And you can see as we approach time zero, that's where we get the exact intersection with that target point, the red dot. And then it seems like we're moving away. We're not getting any closer. But actually, this line is approaching the red dot. We're going to see it here. And we're going to freeze frame 4.5. Even though Indy has moved along the track and is heading this direction, the line that we built still passes through that red dot. So it's mathematically a perfectly valid solution to the way we set up our equations. It just happens to be not one that's satisfying from the physics of the problem and the context.